thank you everybody. Um, thank you everybody for attending this webinar and thanks to Linux Foundation for helping organize this. Uh, now, uh, before I, I kick off uh, the webinar, uh, I just wanted to uh, run, run some polling questions. So I will be peppering some, uh, some poll questions in between as well. So I just want to gather some, some stats uh, from all of you. So if you wouldn't mind uh, just answering the first uh, polling question, so there'll be totally five of them. Uh, so please go ahead and uh, check the polling questions and select the appropriate answer for yourself. Okay, I'll give a few seconds. Okay. Looks like a majority of uh, the people are from the Americas uh, and then a significant size uh, of the audience is from Europe, about 36%. So that's very good to know. Yeah, welcome from everywhere. Good day to everybody. All right, uh, so let's uh, let's head in. Um, so let's look at what we are going to cover today. Oh, one second, let me remove the thing. Yeah, let's let's look at what we are going to cover today. Uh, we look at uh, the state of of our technology today, state of especially the state of DevOps and then cloud native technologies, and what are the often cited problems that is plaguing uh, modern development teams when they're trying to address uh, or when they're trying to use cloud native technology in DevOps. Uh, we look at a proposed solution uh, that we have come up with. Uh, how does it work against, against these problems? What is the value that you would get and what is the expected outcome? And then we'd, we'd go into the next layer deeper uh, to look into its architecture, understand how exactly it works uh, from a technical perspective and look at what is the technical stack that we would be bringing to the table to address these problems. And we'll wrap it up with, uh, with a demo. We have an awesome demo. So my co-host Edward Einel, he's here and we'll be running through a demo of our solution framework. And of course, uh, as always, yeah, please post your questions. We will get to them most probably at the end, uh, but they may be in between before the demo, we may, we may be able to get to some of the questions uh, considering time. Okay, all right. Um, so there is an organization called uh, DORA. Uh, DORA stands for Dev DevOps Research and Assessment. Uh, it is an organization that's been running uh, the DevOps report for the last seven years. Uh, they, have, uh, they have surveyed uh, 32,000 professionals spread across 5,000 organizations. Again, as I mentioned, over the last seven years, and they've compiled these reports. Uh, one of the primary things is today's businesses, as we all know, have embraced digital transformation both to survive and to unlock future agile operations, efficiencies, and revenue streams. Uh, increasingly, DevOps is at the heart of these dev digital transformation projects. And so the DORA report, which is actually, which is called as the Accelerate uh, Report, it has this concept of, of elite teams. Elite teams are these top 20% of the teams and how they've been performing, how they've been able to leverage DevOps to achieve, uh, achieve excellent business results. So if you look at these statistics, uh, the elite teams, they perform 973 times more frequent code deployments than low performing teams. In addition, these elite groups have 6,570 times faster lead times and 6,570 times, again, it's the same number from the report, uh, 6,570 times faster time to recovery and are one third times less likely to see deployed code changes fail. Uh, the report has also revealed similar statistics over the last five years. So this, so this is not this, this is the latest report. This is from March 2021, but we have had very similar numbers. The trend is is just going in the same fashion for the last five years, offering us very clear evidence that when development and operations teams properly adopt DevOps technologies and methodologies within their organization, they are able to substantially increase both the speed and stability of software development. Uh, and deployments, the two main pillars of success within the software development lifecycle. Uh, the, this report also examines uh, successful implementation of DevOps methodologies and how it affects companies' businesses. So the top 1%, so from these, uh, from these elite teams, the top 1% of the DevOps teams uh, that, that were surveyed, they were, able to, uh, they were able to meet or exceed their commercial goals 1.5 times more than the other, other organizations. And what this means is the productivity, the profitability, market share, customer growth, 
uh, all of this have been, have been increased by more than 1.5 times. They've had 50% higher market capital growth on average over a three year time span than organizations whose implementation of DevOps methods have been less successful. Now, if you, if you go to another uh, report, uh, so this is the Kubernetes in the enterprise survey. Now today, as we all know, uh, DevOps is, is almost synonymous with Kubernetes. And that's how it has become uh, in, 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 many, in many organizations. Almost everybody is using Kubernetes, but what we found is most of them are doing it poorly, uh, except for the elite DevOps teams highlighted before. So organizations should not expect better business outcomes just because they're using these cloud native technology or Kubernetes. So these reports or these numbers from this report, uh, they, they emphasize that. So almost 90% are running Kubernetes. They're using Kubernetes to run all sorts of workloads. So there's not one particular workload that is not being used to run on Kubernetes. However, 95% of the organizations that use the cloud native technologies have run into challenges, 95%. And 98% of, of the organizations, they are, they are investing or they're considering investing in Kubernetes training to address these challenges. There are 51% developers who say that, that uh, uh, making that building cloud native applications makes them want to find a new job. So it is causing a lot of burnout and frustration. And, uh, and of course, there is 38% there's developers who, 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 are, who are not able to catch up or not able to keep up with all these new technologies. So we understand that Kubernetes, there are many different ways of deploying Kubernetes, many different ways of, of having a Kubernetes cluster, many different ways of running application within Kubernetes and the technology just keeps growing. And if you add the cloud native technology, I'm not sure how many of you have seen the, the landscape, the CNCF landscape, the link is down below. Uh, there are over a thousand cards. I could have put the screenshot here, but it would be so small that nobody would have been able to read what is in it. So if you add these two things, it becomes a very, very big complexity problem. So what can we do about it? So we, we want to enable businesses to streamline delivery of hundreds of daily deployments across thousands of applications, overcoming the complexity of Kubernetes deployment at enterprise scale. So some of the problems or some of the ways that we can address these are we can, we can, do, we can enable faster deployment or development uh, via increased automation. Uh, beyond, beyond the initial stages of doing a POC, beyond the Kool-Aid, as I would call it, of, of Kubernetes, we want to see what else does Kubernetes not provide that we need to actually address so that it can, it can provide an enterprise solution for, for today's team. We also want to address the cultural aspect of it. A, a big portion of this is cultural as aspect, and the remaining thing is all engineering, as, as, as some would say. So we want to socialize data and metrics. We want to provide uh, full-scale transparency at all levels. We want to facilitate the faster decisions through, through making uh, data available to everybody. We want to also measure, measure, measure. We want to quantify the velocity of change. If something's not working, we want to fail fast and we want to try something else. Uh, developers also need to have uh, the capability to, to self-serve themselves. They should not have to depend on other teams or another process. Uh, so they should be able to quickly test what their uh, problems are. They should be able to help themselves. And finally, all this underlines is we want to remove the fear of complexity of yet another tech. And again, I'm not talking only about Kubernetes. It is all about uh, the cloud native landscape, the, the thousands of technologies that are there, which makes sense, what is suitable for your particular use case. How do developers address that without spending a lot of time in understanding each of those solutions? So in effect, we want to unblock developers. We want to give them the controls back so that they are happier. They, they continue doing what they're doing. They're more confident in what they're doing. And we want, we, want to, we want them to be able to overcome the selection of tools, the complexity in selection of tools and its adoption. So what we have to address these things is a package solution. So we have uh, DevOps care. So in this, in this particular slide, I want to showcase a new product, DevOps Care powered by Lens. So DevOps Care is a culmination of a decade of servicing thousands of customers in virtualization, DevOps, containers, and digital transformation. So we have clearly established that Kubernetes is alone not enough for most teams. There are so many other components that need to be planned, set up, configured, and maintained for an enterprise shop. 
Our objective is to remove the complexity involved in cloud native technologies and Kubernetes, maximize developer productivity, and handle all the operational tasks that tend to distract. With DevOps Care, we let developers focus on the bright side of development, that is building world-class applications and make it a more enjoyable experience. So what is DevOps Care? At its core, DevOps Care is a fully managed service that is delivered through the award-winning Kubernetes IDE called Lens and various Lens extensions. It is a packaged uh, software as a service, SaaS. In other words, it is a prescriptive solution that addresses the management of all aspects of the architecture of cloud native applications running on any flavor or distribution of Kubernetes on any infrastructure anywhere. The DevOps care solution encompasses increased collaboration via a lens cluster sharing feature called spaces and dev clusters and extensions built for lens and Kubernetes. Additionally, DevOps Care includes an industry-grade CI-CD solution embracing GitOps principles, uh, SRE, and monitoring to ensure uptime of all applications in all across all clusters, uh, peace of mind through continuous security enforced via policies, and an up-to-date training module. A large part of DevOps Care would be metrics-driven to ensure the changes are progressing in the right direction and at the right, right pace. So if we can go one step higher, one step further to understand what is the expected outcome of the DevOps care for people adopting it. So the underlying factor as again, uh, I want to reemphasize, we want to eliminate this complexity of Kubernetes and cloud native app development. We want to unblock developers and let them go, let them, let, let them create world-class applications without having these distractions. But how do we do it are these four pillars. Uh, we want to provide uh, full-scale visibility, we want to have a single window into all aspects of cloud-native development, deployment, testing, building, shipping, detect failures in deployed applications quickly, provide visibility into costs and capacity of running Kubernetes applications, provide application uptime metrics. Uh, through, through, the, through automation, we want to provide a reliable software delivery pipeline through GitOps and CI CD. Reduce the friction between dev and ops, uh, provide validated tools and methodologies, uh, provide enterprise uh, grade curated Kubernetes CNCF solutions, uh, increase developer productivity through these mechanisms, provide guidance and solution from Kubernetes experts, uh, have uh, ready-made uh, on-demand training uh, that, is, that is constantly kept up to date with today's technologies, uh, provide best practices so there is no analysis paralysis on the, on the developer side, uh, provide proactive maintenance through continuous metrics monitoring, uh, provide the confidence to scale up safely and with confidence. Now, all of these would, would directly address the unlocking ability of all these business concerns. So you want to outpace your competitors, you want to meet the demands of your, of your, of your customers, you want to act like, act like a service provider, your platform becomes a product. And then you want to, uh, while, while you're doing all of that, you want to be able to mitigate and eliminate risk. So one aspect I want to emphasize and clarify is the scope of DevOps care managed service. So you can look at this sort of chart wherein you have your platform and, and your infra at the right bottom. This is where you would be running either bare metal servers, VMs in the cloud, or what have you. You would also have your container runtime. You could have, or you could have a do-it-yourself and open source Kubernetes uh, distribution, or you could have one of the products from Red Hat or Rancher or from Rantis, or it could be, it could be a public cloud uh, provider uh, for Kubernetes like EKS and AKS and GKE. And then if you go further up, you have the application developers who are in charge of building applications. This is the coding team. They, they, they build out code, uh, they, they, they have configurations to make it work, then they have Docker files to convert them into images, and then they ship the images into registry. And then these images are used through Kubernetes or using Kubernetes to run them as application parts. Now where Lens DevOps Care, or where DevOps Care powered by Lens, where that comes in the picture is within this blue box. So we would deploy Lens. So Lens is just like any other client. Uh, it uses Kubernetes API. It is a very popular IDE as I, as I mentioned. Uh, it is graphical, it has a graphical interface, but it, it also has the capability of extending its functionality via extensions. 
And these extensions are what also go through the Kubernetes API and they provide super user capabilities. And through these extensions, we provide all the additional capabilities. We provide, we provide a policy enforcer, we provide um, a secure, secure RBAC visualization of that and, and making sure people are aware of what are the, what, what are the drawbacks of particular uh, role-based access control models, uh, provide uptime of, of application health, capacity cost analysis, uh, proactive security audits and remediation, a developer experience through what are known as dev cluster. Uh, we'll have a demo of that uh, very soon. There will be experts available uh, 24 by seven uh, in case you, you have a problem, you want to troubleshoot a particular problem in one of your environments, be it in production or any non-production environment, or you just want guidance. You want to just know what is the best way to approach a particular problem. So there'll be professional uh, services or experts available 24 by seven. We already talked about training, which will be available on demand. Uh, always kept to up to, kept up to date on Kubernetes and cloud native technologies. And all of this will be provided via the backbone of CI, CD and GitOps. Okay. So, the, so the, I want to reemphasize that the blue box is the only thing that would be part of this. What that means is that it does not matter what Kubernetes flavor or distro you're using. It does not matter where you're running your uh, applications. It could be on-prem or in the cloud or even hybrid multi-cloud. And it also does not matter at what stage you're in. You could be a beginner, you could be just thinking about, about moving into Kubernetes newly, or, or you could be an expert. Uh, so DevOps care would address all these uh, different stages of the journey. Now, if we zoom up a bit and look at the, the technical stack that would empower uh, all of these DevOps care technologies. So, for the, for, the, for the Docker images themselves and the application pods, we have what is known as a managed dev cluster. This is another feature available in, in Lens. Uh, this allows you to set up uh, an independent cluster for each developer in your team so that uh, he or she can experiment uh, whatever it is that they want to do. They want to run a Kubernetes pod in a particular way. They want to run jobs. All that is possible. It also has the Docker tool chain installed. So you can, you can run your Docker builds directly within your dev cluster. And then you can reset, reset it back in case you, you, you mess it up, in case it, it is, is, is not working anymore. You can, just click off, you can just click a button and reset it and it, 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 it gets, back, gets back to working again. Uh, for the policy enforcer, we bring in OPA, Open Policy Agent. We have QB Scan, which allows you to visualize uh, your role-based access control and your rules. Uh, Prometheus Grafana stack for, for, an, for an application health perspective. Uh, we use Goldilocks and KubeCast to provide you capacity analysis and cost analysis uh, in case you're using multi-tenant uh, sort of uh, structure. Uh, we use Aqua, Conf, ConfTest, and OPA uh, to provide you security audits. And the security audits goes all the way from your pods to your images, as well as to your hosts. We also have um, a chatbot that would be, again, deployed as an extension within, uh, within Lens that would allow you to reach the, reach the DevOps care team. This is the professional services or the experts, the Kubernetes experts that is always available uh, from an SRE perspective, from a general tool selection perspective, guidance perspective. And we have on-demand training that we host ourselves. From a GitOps uh, CI CD perspective, we bring in Flux uh, V2 as well as GitHub Actions. Now, the, the key takeaway take from this slide is that this is, a, this is a prescriptive solution. We have decided some tools for you uh, based, on, uh, based on our experience, based on our analysis. And we have built extensions so that at a click of a button, you should be able to deploy all of these into your environment. Now, looking at another view of the solution arch architecture, how it works. Uh, at the bottom, you would see uh, the clusters, you can have n number of clusters and these can be the clusters that you uh, as, as a dev team in your organization runs. They could be dev, QA, test, production, whatnot. Uh, the developers on the team, they would, uh, they would use kubectl or they would use Lens. Again, Lens is just a layer on top of kubectl that gives you a graphical interface, but still depends on, on Kubernetes API. But you would be using the Lens to access the clusters and to do all sorts of operations on top of it. Now, using a lens, uh, the capability to share the cluster, uh, you would share this cluster with, with you, you can share the cluster with, with other teams to enable collaboration, or you can share it with the DevOps care team. Now, the DevOps care team, uh, they would be able to access your cluster securely. Uh, it will be it's a secure connection via, via VPN or 
as good as VPN. And they would use the lens to come in and now they have a visibility into your cluster. Again, these are, these are governed by tight role-based access control policies that you can set up. You have complete control over this. Uh, but the DevOps Kit team, now they have visibility into your cluster. Uh, they, can, they can view uh, errors, they can view warnings, they can set up alerts. They can also install extensions to make it easier uh, for, you, for you, for the developer to, to conduct their business, to continue developing their applications. If they want a CI CD uh, stack that can be deployed via extensions, a monitoring stack can also be deployed via extensions. Uh, at the same time, the developers, they can uh, leverage the managed dev clusters to do the experimentation. And this is, again, this is a hosted solution on our side. Uh, the developers can access it at any time. Uh, obviously, in internet access is required to do all of this. But the, dev, the managed dev cluster provides you a, a full-scale Kubernetes cluster uh, running, running the, the latest GA version of Kubernetes, as well as the Docker toolchain, as I mentioned before. And you can experiment on this. You can, you can run Docker builds. You can run even Docker compose if you wanted to do so, because it has the entire Docker toolchain installed. Uh, in addition, uh, like let's say for one example, when the monitoring stack is set up on all your clusters, there is another uh, intermediate or there is, there is a centralized uh, Prometheus cluster that we would set up that would aggregate all of the metrics from all of your individual clusters into one place. So that would provide you a place from where you can run additional uh, analytics and telemetry. We can also plug in a Grafana or any other tools that you want as, 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 as expected with, with Prometheus. And you can even provide exporters and all sorts of stuff to provide you even more visibility, and you can do you can take you can take decisions based on that. Uh, now we still we still depend on open source for all of our for most of our solutions. Uh, some of the extensions we have built ourselves, but they also have open source technologies. So there is also a connection to to Helm and GitHub, and these are these are very uh, very normal connections, very typical connections that you would expect for any uh, cloud native project. And then um, I also want to explain one other thing. One of the one of the core backbones of delivering our DevOps care uh, uh, extensions is is through GitOps. Now GitOps is is fantastic because it provides you a seamless architecture and solution to to test code as well as configurations. So any of the extensions that we build or any of the tools that we bring in, we would deploy it via via GitOps. Uh, and this could this goes to our, our security. Uh, uh, tools. It can be policies that we that we set up. Everything would be would be would be uh, pushed via via GitOps. So it gives you it gives you the same capabilities as testing your application code. So every change is is observable. Uh, it is verifiable and measurable. Uh, you can also do easy rollbacks uh, of of uh, to a to a previous state. Uh, you'd also get secure deployments, uh, and then you can also put in a, a, an approval process, which is very lightweight. Uh, just in case you you don't want things to go without without any 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 oversight into your higher environments, and it provides a very modular and tool independent architecture. So that is one of our touchstones on which we would be deploying uh, the DevOps care solutions. Okay. And finally, we would uh, enter the demo. I would like to hand it over to Edward, uh, please. Uh, but before the demo, I wanted one more uh, poll. If you wouldn't mind. Um, okay. yeah. yeah, please take a minute, a second to answer uh, another poll. Thank you very much. And Edward, uh, over to you. Thank you, Anu. Excellent presentation breaking down DevOps care and why it's valuable to the community. Um, I will give it a couple minutes or maybe 30 seconds actually for people to answer the polling question. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to jump into a demo of the backbone technology that allows DevOps care to work and operate um, for our customers, our prospects, and the community themselves. I do want to thank all of you for joining us today out of your busy lives, wherever you are, whether you're in North America, Europe, um, APAC, and so forth, maybe Antarctica. Um, but Thank you all for, for joining today and we will jump into the demo just as Anoop ends this poll. All right. I think we have a sizable response. 40% uh, of, uh, uh, of the respondents say complexity. 
has been the number one uh, Kubernetes challenge. 43% uh, mentioned cultural changes and development as a challenge, and 17% mentioned security as a challenge. 0% mentioned storage. So that is very, very good to hear. Uh, very much on, aligned with what we see from the, from the DevOps reports. Thank you for that. I will end the poll now. Excellent. And when you get a chance, please stop sharing your screen and then I'll be able to share mine. Ah, perfect. Screen. Thank you, Anoop. Yes. Cool. And navigate over to share my screen. Okay, everyone. Well, welcome. Today we will be talking about Lens and DevOps Care. Lens is the backbone technology behind DevOps Care that allows us to actually build and operate and be able to actually release and showcase this product to our um, prospects and community. So without further ado, this is Lens. It is a desktop application. Some of it is open source and Lens allows our users to get a full situational awareness of everything that's happening within the Kubernetes cluster with the ability to actually manage multiple Kubernetes clusters. And as Anoop mentioned, any certified Kubernetes distro, whether it's Mirantis Kubernetes Engine, EKS, Rancher K3S, and so forth. So what we see here at a high level is actually how our cluster is currently performing in the last hour from our CPU to the memory, the capacity, and of course, some warning messages that Lens is able to provide to us and our users to get a better understanding of what is currently happening within our Kubernetes cluster itself. I do wanna mention that Lens also has a smart terminal that allows you to automatically connect to the correct context of the Kubernetes cluster that you're currently leveraging. So right now we can see I am leveraging a mini kube cluster. It's connected via the Kubernetes API and my kube config file. And I can switch over to this dev cluster immediately and begin to understand how this cluster is currently performing. This is the dev cluster that Anoop mentioned in the presentation. It is a managed cluster hosted entirely by Morantis. And this is going to give developers direct access to a development cluster all in real time without actually having to leverage their local operating system resources on their laptop and so forth. One of the neat things behind dev cluster is actually the ability for it to auto wake and auto sleep. And what I mean by that is if a developer is currently not leveraging the cluster, Lens and DevOps Care will be able to detect the fact that that cluster is currently not leveraging, it, not being leveraged, and it will actually be able to go to sleep. The reason why this is so beneficial is we are seeing many development teams currently wasting a ton of resources on clusters that may be living in the public cloud or running on their computers, and um, they're not necessarily leveraging the cluster to its full capability, but they may be paying for that cluster. So here's the dev cluster. I'm going to switch to another cluster now as well, just to be able to show the true capability behind Lens and so forth, and being able to actually switch from cluster to cluster while always maintaining the correct Kubernetes API endpoint. We'll clear this. We can see it's connected here. And if I navigate back to my dev cluster, I can open the smart terminal, clear this out, kubectl version and immediately see that it's connected to the correct context. So this is extremely neat behind Lens and DevOps Care. When you're working with multiple Kubernetes clusters, we're really eliminating the complexity of switching from cluster to cluster while being able to ensure yourself that you're working in that correct context, right? So if you're ever leveraging multiple Kubernetes clusters, whether it's a proof of concept cluster, a dev cluster, a production grade cluster, Lens and DevOps Care ensures that you're working in the correct context of that cluster, really eliminating user error and complexity when working with multiple Kubernetes clusters. So Anoop definitely talked about metrics and observability, the ability to get a better understanding of everything that's happening in your Kubernetes cluster and your applications. What's so neat here is we can immediately see all of my pods that are running and some messages that are associated to this pod, giving us a better understanding of what is currently happening and showcasing and directing us on how to actually troubleshoot an error that we may see within our Kubernetes cluster or an application through DevOps care. Clicking into one of these pods, we're going to get a granular view of 
everything that's happening within this pod from the labels, the annotations, the operating system and so forth. We can see the containers it's currently um, interacting with. And this pod is actually currently killed and that's why we don't see any metrics. So if I actually open a different pod, we are gonna pull in those metrics again from CPU to memory, network and file system. If we see a drop in file system, it's extremely important. That's going to let us know that we need to troubleshoot, debug and so forth. Again, one neat thing behind Lens is also that it's always leveraging your role-based access control from your kubeconfig file and DevOps Care does the same thing. And we actually help you get, or we actually give you um, the necessary details and requirements needed to ensure that you are following the best practices when it comes to role-based access control as well. On the top right-hand side of Lens, we can actually see some admin functions I can perform Again, these admin functions are based off of your RBAC. So if you don't have the correct um, role-based access control from your kubeconfig file, you won't be able to perform many of these actions. And we'll actually showcase this in just a couple minutes. We can view our logs all in real time, get a better understanding of how our cluster is performing or our pod. We can download these logs. And the neat thing, and, and Anoop actually mentioned this, is through Lens and DevOps Care, we actually have the ability to create secure spaces where I can share my Kubernetes cluster securely without ever exposing my kubeconfig file to a colleague. So that's really matching best practices as well from a security standpoint. And Lens Spaces, again, allows us to share access with colleagues, with the DevOps care team to ensure that we are um, taking care of troubleshooting issues, um, logs, and also being able to do everything that Anoop mentioned within DevOps care. So from here, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a space. This space is what is used to actually share the cluster with a colleague. And I'm gonna create this space. I'm gonna add my cluster to this space. And actually I'm going to be able to sh share a local Minikube cluster that's running on my current operating system on my laptop with a noop. And he's going to have admin functionality and admin privileges to that cluster. And this is exactly how DevOps care is going to work when the team comes in, gives you best practices, sets up the GitOps, our CICD pipeline, and so forth. Cool. So I'm going to navigate to my Minikube cluster. Again, we can see everything here in one beautiful place. Actually, before I jump into that, I do want to showcase some very cool things as well. So Anoop did talk about extensions. Um, we're continuously building many, many different extensions that allows us to enable DevOps care for the community, our prospects, our customers, and so forth in a beautiful way. So I currently have various different extensions currently added to Lens, all um, by our partners and built by us. Here you can see KubeCost, you can see Aqua Security. These are extensions that one, for example, KubeCost will be able to tell me how much money I'm currently spending on my Kubernetes cluster and that environment we have. Um, the starboard extension that's going to scan for vulnerabilities and so forth on my Kubernetes cluster. And I do want to note that we are going to showcase all of these extensions in the next webinar where we really go into depth of all of the capabilities that these extensions can provide for us on our Kubernetes cluster and through Lens Dev or DevOps Care powered by Lens. So now let's go ahead and actually create a space. We're going to create a secure space that we can add my Minikube cluster to. This space is going to be called DevOps Care One. Excellent. So we created this space. And once we create a space, we do need to add a Kubernetes cluster directly to this space. So what we'll do is we'll navigate to my Minikube cluster. I'm going to hit this plus icon. That's going to add the cluster to the team space. I do want to note that when you are adding a cluster to a team space, we are downloading a daemon set directly to your cluster which actually creates a end-to-end -end encryption between your Kubernetes API endpoint and the Lens Cloud API, ensuring an encrypted tunnel that is happening to ensure that we're meeting best security practices. One of the reasons why we've developed this feature is because, and I think I touched on this a little bit, but it's mainly because a lot of organizations need to share kubeconfig files with their colleagues, and that's not the best practice. Once you actually give somebody access to your kubeconfig file, they have access to that file always, although maybe they don't have the correct role-based access control, but they do have access to that kubeconfig file. And we're really potentially causing security concerns. 
So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that cluster to the space. We're going to download that daemon set that I just mentioned, which is going to create that tunneling, that end-to-end -end encryption tunneling between our Kubernetes cluster and Lens Cloud. So as we can see, it's been installed. If I navigate to my space, DevOps Care 1, we're going to be able to see that cluster here. It's currently disconnected. Now, if I launch it, it's going to open up and connect directly to our cluster. This may take a moment. And of course, this isn't that cool yet, but once I add a nuke to this and share the cluster directly with him, you all will be able to see the power behind um, Lens Spaces and DevOps Care, being able to actually give your colleagues access, being able to give the DevOps Care team access to your cluster and so forth. I do want to mention that when you first share access um, to this space with the colleague, it is read-only access to that Kubernetes cluster. Now we have also created specific additional permissions that you can leverage where you create a team within your space itself. And in that team, you can create an admin team where they actually get admin functionality and so forth, all through Lens Spaces and DevOps Care. So without further ado, I'm going to actually add a noop to this space. Um, a noop, I believe your name is just a noop, correct? That is correct, Great. yes. Cool. So I'm going to share the team space with them. We've sent them an invite. And before I hand over the ball back to him, I'm actually going to navigate over to my settings of this space. And this is where we actually can see some really cool things. So within members, we can invite new members. We already invited a new through a different user interface. I can view my invitees. Here we can see that it expires in seven days. And of course, I can actually create teams within our Lens space. And what I mean by that is if you have a team of developers that need to access a specific namespace, you can actually create a team titled developers, adjust the role-based access control on that cube config file and add those members to that team of developers. And they will only have access to specific namespaces, maybe to review microservices and so forth. From here, um, Anoop, have you gone ahead and accept that you have, oh, can you accept the invite? Yeah, okay. I was thinking I maybe want to share it, uh, but maybe I can just accept it. Let's accept it first because I'm gonna make you an admin on my, um, on my space, which is yeah. gonna give you full observability into my Kubernetes cluster and so forth. Perfect, I have accepted it. Excellent, cool. We can see that it's been accepted on our end as well. Now I'm gonna add a member here. The member has to already be invited to your space, as you can imagine, and click a noop. And we've actually added him to the space. So what I'm going to do now is navigate back to our cluster. I can go to my home. And the neat thing behind Lens Spaces, so on the top right-hand side, I can see various different spaces I currently have access to. And within each of these spaces, there are various different Kubernetes clusters that I can now leverage, work on, troubleshoot, configure, and so forth for my team of developers. So if I click team re-event, I just wanna showcase this real quick. We immediately have the ability to see all of these different Kubernetes clusters. They are currently disconnected, but if I click into one, it's actually gonna populate and load that cluster on Lens through Lens Spaces. And then of course, if I navigate back to our DevOps care, we can see we have a cluster here. So from here, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen I'm going to give the ball back to Anoop real quick, and he's going to be able to show everybody what he is able to see now that he's been able, now that he's accepted the invite to Lens Spaces. We've shared the cluster to that space and so forth. So I will stop sharing and give you the ball back, Anoop. All right. Thank you very much. Yes, I did receive the invite and I've accepted it. Uh, I would require you to walk us through to what would a developer do next to enable the cluster. Okay, and here, so I can go into my spaces, manage the spaces, and I do see DevOps care. I am an admin here, mm -hmm. and I can click on this. How would I, yeah. how would I ex access this from now? Let's, let's ex escape here on the top right-hand side, Anoop. Yep. Just and then hit it one more time. 
what you want to leverage is that doggle that you see on your top right hand side where it says a nuke to oh, just perfect. just click that yes and then devops right. care all right and there you go perfect now we have mini cube that's your uh cluster correct yes it says edward and now i'm able to see the nodes that you have i'm able to see even all the pods and I can, I can look at the error messages. I can assist you. I can tell you, hey, this is an error message. You need to fix, you need to do this to fix it. Yes. I can look at the logs, I can exec into it. Uh, I can check the logs directly from here. Oh yeah, this is the error message that you're getting. And that's because that pod is currently not running, I believe. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's, it's dying, it's the MSR pod. Yes, yes. That is so. One of the questions, Edward, uh, is the uh, does DevOps care team need cluster level admin access to the Kubernetes cluster in order to troubleshoot and resolve issues? So that can be done through Lens Spaces. Um, it just depends on really your role based access control. And what I mean by that is, do the DevOps care team really need access to the entire cluster or do they only need access to specific namespaces? So it's really up to you to decide, but generally speaking, we would like the DevOps care team to have admin access on the cluster. Yes. Okay. Very cool. Uh, do you need me to show anything or I can stop sharing? One quick thing I would like you to show is if you can go down to that resource map at the bottom, all oh. the way at the bottom, let's see if okay. we're able to showcase oh. this. Nice yeah, so this is an extension that's also built by us that's really helping people get started with Kubernetes, but also anybody leveraging Kubernetes. This is a great resource map that actually showcases everything that currently lives within your Kubernetes cluster, all of the resources and so forth, and how they're related to one, each other, to one another. So great extension here will help you troubleshoot it's going to also teach you how everything's related to one another and so forth and this is another extension that is built um, for for devops care and for lens and so forth that anyone can leverage just one of many there are over 100 extensions currently built on top of lens and of course majority of those extensions are around security vulnerabilities scanning for security vulnerabilities flux is an extension on top of this as well and also being able to understand your current cost on your Kubernetes cluster and so forth. So, yeah, I, th I think that is everything that I wanted to demonstrate today, Anoop. I will hand it over to you. All right, thank you, appreciate that. Thank you so much, Edward. Uh, so let's so let's just look at uh, some of the questions that we have. Uh, one question from Gyan Rajkumar: Where can we use Knative? Yeah. So Knative is something that we are actively exploring. One of the places that we want to leverage uh, serverless solutions is, is where uh, a cluster might not have enough resources to install all the extensions. So uh, pretty much where the, if a cluster is small and it's just enough to run the applications, we do not want to make it any, any more worse and cause performance overhead by deploying extensions. And that is where we would want to leverage Knative and generally serverless solutions. And one of one of the key pieces uh, that we're looking at is is in is in CI/CD. Uh, if you are familiar with Jenkins X, uh, that's one of the one of one of the solutions that utilizes Knative. Another use case would be in in security and vulnerability analysis. We do not want to keep something running all the time. We want to we want to surgically uh, uh, run a pod. Uh, it would just collect all the metrics. It would run the vulnerability scans, whatever is necessary, and produce a report, and it gets out of the way. So those are some of the places where we would want to leverage Knative. Again, we do not have Knative today at this point in time, but this is coming very soon. Okay. And another question from, uh, from Mick McGrath. Uh, thank you for that. So uh, how do you handle local development iterations? For example, how best to wire up a local file change of a Node.js project to auto reload a running container in a Kubernetes pod? Uh, fantastic question. So. Um, the way we are approaching this is uh, again, if you go back to one of the things, and we we do not have uh, uh, we do not have a demo for that yet, is that the Docker tool chain would be would be installed in your in the managed dev cluster. Each developer gets his or her own managed dev cluster, 
And what this does is this would enable you to treat it as though it is something that is running on your own machine. Like for example, if you were to, if you were to bring up a part, if you were to use kubectl or whatever and run a part and expose it as a service, you would be able to hit localhost and the node port and access that particular service. So similarly, when the Docker tool chain uh, is deployed, uh, you would be able to do this auto, uh, this hot reload of your, of your files directly into the container and you'll be able to do the tests. So that is something, again, that is something that is being planned and being tested out as we speak. Uh, but uh, we have a lot of interest in, in very similar uh, things, similar workflows to make it easy and seamless development. Uh, so that is something that's coming. So please watch out for that. Uh, another question, can you choose the Kubernetes version for the managed dev cluster? Today, uh, today you cannot. Uh, we we run we run a very lean, uh, uh, minimalistic Kubernetes. It is CNCF, but uh, it is minimalistic. It, we run K0s uh, because that helps you conserve uh, the uh, the uh, compute resources and everything. But still, but at the same time, it is a full fledged Kubernetes uh, distro. Uh, so you cannot use you cannot choose your own Kubernetes version at this point in time. But it is something that we would uh, explore in the future. All right, any other questions? Okay, is it possible to customize the metrics that are shown? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So that is the self-service component that we talked about. Uh, there would be, there would be uh, uh, avenues where the metrics uh, that, are, that are collected as well as the metrics that are displayed uh, that would be that you, you would be able to customize that. We would be also deploying uh, Prometheus exporters uh, that would that would be able to collect application specific uh, metrics. So it could be a, a particular, it could be a Java application, or it could be a MariaDB or something else. Uh, so bespoke metrics that would be definitely something that would be available. Okay, great. Well, if there aren't any other questions, Anoop, Edward, any closing remarks? Uh, the one closing remark that I have, uh, again, thank you so much for everybody for attending. The closing remark is uh, we would have another uh, webinar, uh, the part two, if you will, and that would go much deeper into the technical stack and it'll have much cooler demos uh, than this. Uh, we wanted to use this uh, opportunity to, to introduce DevOps Kit to all of you. But this is something that we are building actively. We have a team behind it that is very excited to, to, to address today's uh, DevOps and cloud native complexity problems. So please watch out for that for webinar demo too. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you all so much for being here today and big thanks to Anoop and Edward for um, for speaking today on this topic. Uh, please look for the recording later today on the Linux Foundation YouTube page, and we hope to see you back at another webinar. Thanks, everybody.